All right, this update is brought to you by AutoZone. Padres, they found a new way to lose yesterday. Lost the Giants 3-2. to two. They're back home at Petco Park for a quick three-game series versus the Cubbies tonight. 640 first pitch, you Darvish on the mound for the Padres. Tonight is the national championship game between UConn and Purdue. 430 is when our coverage starts. 620 tip-off time. You can listen to that game Right here on San Diego Sports 760. Other college basketball news late last night has been reported that John Calipari will be the next head coach at Arkansas. And John, Cody Rhodes is the new WWE Universal <laughs> Undisputed Heavyweight Champion of the World. That was like your best update. There is no close second. Normally it's Padres play at 710. This update brought to you by, and then you screw up the update. Starting Stronger starts at AutoZone, where they've got battery solutions in the form of free battery testing, free battery charging, and replacement batteries that fit your needs. That's what makes them America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Best ever. All right, San Diego and Southern California, what's going on? We're with you until 4.30, like Jim just said, because we have national championship game. Pre-game Westwood one coverage beginning at 4.30, tip-off at 6.20, Purdue and UConn, kind of an epic showdown between the top two teams in college basketball tonight in Phoenix. Now, there was a lot to get into this weekend. Obviously, for Jim and Brent, it's like WrestleMania. For me, I'm watching... Final fours, men's and women's. I'm watching the Padres. I know Jim did all this as well, but he was more focused on Philadelphia and WrestleMania. But here's my takeaway. I spent a lot of time on my couch this weekend. (laughs) Here's my takeaway from the weekend. I am hoping I'm wrong here, and I hope Jim agrees with me, but I don't know if we're going to get to the bottom of this or not. We both maybe believe, (laughs) we don't have evidence, that someone has gotten to Mike Schild because he is using nicknames less over the last three days. Mm Mm-hmm than he was to start the year. Last night's press conference, when they lose to the Giants, that epic loss, yeah. Hassan Kim throws the ball away a couple of times or whatever. Oh, happened. I know where you're going. He only said one nickname. It was Kimmy. I know. That was the only nickname in the entire postgame press conference. This was supposed to kind of be the theme of the year. I know. This was going to carry us until at least the 1st of October. Yeah. Has someone gotten to Mike Schilt to tell him not to use the weighties and the bogeys and the swaries? A swarry. Yeah, swarry. You know, I wouldn't be surprised because you are right, John. Um, Friday night and yesterday, there was very little nicknames. There was very little nicknames. I was surprised. I'm kind of I'm kind of bummed out. I hope that the Mike Schilt press conference doesn't become kind of just normal. Is it because they lost two of three, but they were already losing two of three to teams? They they hadn't won a series this year and he was using nicknames. I know. And and maybe like, you know, I gave him crap because it's like, hey, if you win, it's fine. Everyone everyone loves it. Everyone thinks it's endearing. It's great. When yep. you lose, no one cares. Like no one cares about the nicknames. No one cares about the participation trophies after the game. Like it's did you win or lose? And if you lose, those kinds of things aren't going to become cute anymore. They're going to become annoying. And especially you know with the fan base is it's kind of fed up with losing here. Um, it, it, you gotta, you gotta read the room here. I think maybe Mike Schill read the room. Do you think he got like that, you know the you, post game? Hold stuff. on. Do you think he spent time on YouTube and the algorithm popped up one of our wrap up shows and all of a sudden <laughs> he went down a rabbit hole? And he's like, oh my gosh! It's like sometimes you don't realize what you're saying on air. Uh, by the way, Brent, what do you got? My headset's not working. But I said it's like when you like hear your your voice for the first time, you're like. Wow, do I really sound oh, I like really, that? I know. That's not what I sound like in my head. Like he heard one of his press conferences. He's like, wow. Do I, I, really, do I really do that all the time? I said, I said, Wadey for Tyler Wade. I called Nick Ahmed Nikki. That was honestly <laughs> the most egregious thing of the entire season so far. Now, you sent this to me this morning. I'm dropping off my five year old at preschool. I look at my phone. And to me, this is a bombshell. The Manny really? Machado, oh, complete bombshell. I never thought we'd ever hear from Manny Machado about his elbow having any impact on him other than his inability to field to start the year, which we all knew was a possibility. But Dennis Lynn, 
pretty fascinating look today in The Athletic, uh, tweeting out about Machado having elbow surgery. Doctors have told him he might not be close to 100% until 2025. I never thought that was a possibility. Here's a quote from Machado. On his elbow, better than it was last year, but definitely not where I want it to be. I know talking to the doctors, you're going to be more 100% in that second year after surgery. I never forecasted that or that we'd even hear on that for Manny Machado. Is 2024 going to be not a lost season for Machado, but building towards 2025? No chance of career numbers for Machado at the dish because uh, of the elbow? Uh, you better hope not. I know. Right, this franchise can't afford to just like wait things out. Yeah, next year. I mean, next year he's like thirty-three or however old he's going to be. Right, he's getting older. He's you know a guy that has had a lot of injuries in his career, and a lot of these injuries he has not told the media about, and that's kind of like what makes Manny Machado Manny Machado Mm -hmm. is that he posts and nobody knows what he's going through. It's kind of like the what he views as the leadership quality that he brings to the table. He goes out there, he plays through any type of injury and more often than not, he's going to post, you know, a 270 batting average, 30 plus home runs and 90, 200 RBIs with a 800 plus OPS and play gold glove defense. Mm -hmm. It's like, Oh, but Manny was going through a back issue last year or Manny had a foot thing or he has an elbow elbow. thing or whatever the case may be, but he still put up his numbers. Still got 30 home runs. Yep. That's great. Unfortunately, we're in a time with the Padres where y- you can't have Manny Machado not be Manny Machado. He needs to be the driving force here in, in this lineup. I know Tatis might be considered the best player in this lineup, but Manny Machado is the engine. When he goes, the team usually goes. Right. We've seen it the last four, four or five seasons. All right. When Manny Machado's hot, when Manny Machado is at the plate doing his thing, this team looks really good, and they win more than they lose. When Manny Machado struggles, what do we see with the Padres? They struggle. It's hard for them to win games. It's hard for them to get runs on the board. When Manny Machado is not performing, when he's going through his slump right now, when he's hitting under 200, when he has an OPS in the 600s, when he's not you know, hitting the ball for power, when he has no pop in his bat. Like I remember a couple years ago when they were in New York, and they had this like behind the scenes thing of Manny Machado on the field. And he kept saying, he's like, I have no pop. I got no pop. I remember that. Yep. And it's, and, and it's, it's something that will um, make or break this season. In my point is if Manny Machado has a bad year, if Manny Machado replicates last year and this year, I don't think the Padres make the postseason. If Machado has more close to a 2022 Manny Machado season, I think their odds for the postseason Go up. I'm not saying it's like a given, but it will it will greatly increase their odds if Manny Machado put together a you know 2024 season that was like his 2022 season. But kind of didn't he tell Dennis Lynn yesterday like that's not who I've been told I'm going to be this year. Now I'm not saying the guy's going to hit 200 with 11 home runs like you said. He kind of falls out of bed and hits 30 home runs and it's 270. And I also don't want to be this guy, but I'm going to do it anyway. Is it unfair of me to be the Monday morning quarterback and go back to last year and say you're 11 games under 500 at the end of August? You've lost three straight. Your season is so over. Everyone knows it. Everyone knew the season was over. Now, Machado, you could argue it is a good leader to say we're in the thick of it until we're officially eliminated on playing, even though at that point he had already admitted to elbow issues. He wasn't playing in the field Every single day, he could have saved five weeks. He could have gotten under the knife five weeks earlier. Truthfully, he could have done it more than that if he wanted to. The writing was on the wall well before the end of August. He could have had five weeks easy, shut it down, and then we wouldn't even be having this exact conversation until five weeks from now. Like He'd be five weeks ahead of schedule from where he is right now. Jim, we don't know when he's going to be in the field. I mean, the the whole idea, oh, it's going to be later this month. Is it? He's not even throwing to first base. From third, he's throwing to second. He hasn't even attempted that length of a throw. So he's not playing in the field. He waited until the end of the season. Doctors have told him he'll be healthier in 2025 than he's going to be in 2024. With the benefit of hindsight, was it a mistake for Machado not to shut it down? Or is that not fair to say, you know, six months later or whatever? 
I don't think it's fair because it's not like a situation that we know of yet where Machado's like, yeah, I'll be back to 100% in like four or five weeks. Right. They're talking about 2025, John. 2025. Mm -hmm. So I don't think regardless of when he got the surgery, if it would have been at the beginning of September last year or the end of August, if it would have even made a difference. Okay. That's maybe, fair. Maybe five fair. weeks might, he might feel better-ish. But I still think if you are hearing him say, yeah, the doctors told me I won't be fully 100% until at least 2025, to me, then it doesn't really matter. Okay. And he's and the, the biggest point of, of Manny Machado getting the surgery when he did last year was he better be ready for opening day next season. And he was. He was ready for opening day. And he had a big home run in Korea. Mm -hmm. And he yeah, had that big game. That, seriously, the 15 run game in yeah, a big game, man. That, that home run was the nail in the Dodgers' yep. coffin in that game. Definitely. And then back at Petco Park. Uh, the opening weekend, he had that big home run He's against the seven, Giants. Right, seven or eight RBIs. Seven I mean, he's RBIs. Quasi productive, not quasi. really. And it's just, again, the sample size is still so yeah. insignificant. It's not even ten percent of the year. So he's back on the field. Okay, he was here opening day. We all know that his bat is more important than his glove. Yeah, definitely. that's what we cared about the most. The 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 but getting back into the field. Hopefully, it comes this year. But like by some you know crazy weird chance, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. As long as his bats in the lineup, that's all that matters. Now, for me, the elbow, my biggest question is, I know it's affecting him being not in the field. Is it affecting him at the plate? Because if, yes. if it's affecting him at the plate. Yes. Then, in my phone, it says yes. Then we have a problem. <laughs> yes. The answer is definitively 100% absolutely yes. And it's and when I say we have a problem, I don't mean like, oh, you should go to surgery at this time instead of this time. No, no, no. I mean, we have a problem with the chances for the Padres to make the postseason this year. And the chances of him having the numbers. Like you said, it's not as simple as one player is good and the team is good. But with for whatever reason with Manny, it's gone that way. 2020, short year, massive month, great production for the team. Yep. 2022, massive year. One of the best years in baseball, certainly in the National League. He carries them to the postseason. Truth be told, Jim, the other four seasons, and it's not fair to call this a season. It's been 12 games. But 19, right. 21, 23, and these 12 games, he's completely underperformed. Yep. I mean, who disagrees with that? 70470 start it with team or 877-767-4760. So I'll give him credit. Mm -hmm. 2022 was great. 2020 short, not his fault. There was a pandemic. Really, really good. 19, 21, 23. He lacks the same production. And the team completely collapses. Is it a coincidence? It's just, it's factual though. And we all know here, everybody listening, watching us on YouTube, listening on the yep. iHeartRadio app, right? You, John, Brent. We know Manny Machado, if he's out there, he's going to put up his close to his normal numbers. He's going to get so. close to 30 home runs, right? He's going to play close to 150-ish games. Mm -hmm. All of that. He's going to have stretches this year where he's amazing offensively. He just, that's what Manny Machado does. The thing is, I don't know if this team can afford to just have spurts of of like really good output from Manny Machado this year. They need consistent greatness. Eh, maybe not greatness, but they need consistently good Manny I Machado. I agree. Consistently good Manny Machado throughout the year. Does everybody go through slumps? Of course. Does everyone go through 12-game slumps? Of course. You just can't have these 12 games turn into a month, turn into a month and a half, turn into, you know, Two of the first three months of the season, Manny Machado was bad. Like it, it has to end here at some point, early on, or else you. This trend could go on for a little bit. And if if we look up at the end of this month and we see that Manny Machado had like a six eighty OPS at the end of this month, that's who he was last year. Then it's it's like almost a little bit of a deja vu from last year, Manny Machado. Yeah, like I, I'm looking at this article. I mean, I really could not believe this. I I did not expect it. Maybe I was naive. Like him saying there's no timetable on getting back into the field. We'll play it by ear. We'll see how my body feels. The doctors have said 2025. I mean, I just assume because it's Manny. I, I said this all offseason. Manny's going to be out there March 20th when they play in Korea. And mm -hmm. by dog it, that's not the right term, whatever the term is. By dog it? <laughs> you know, like darn it, he was out there. Like because it's just Manny. Oh, yeah. Okay. Where other people wouldn't be out there. So I never thought anyone would be talking about his elbow in the field because it's Manny Machado. Now, someone else brought up an interesting point in replying to Dennis Lynn's tweet from earlier today. This idea that, well, hold on. Harper had the same surgery. Did he, by the way? Did he have the exact same surgery? I don't know. He I wasn't there. Didn't he have Tommy John? 
So maybe he had a more significant surgery. Because he literally, he was wearing like a Tommy John. I think he had I remember Tommy John. That. I remember that because he couldn't throw. Yeah. And then eventually he could field. And now he's a first baseman and a DH. But they're like, yo, six months after that surgery, Harper was raking. 900 OPS, very productive player. Now, again, everyone's different. And so it's hard to compare any one player to any other player, especially coming off an injury. But I guess my point is this. I never thought the elbow would prevent him from being the offensive player we expected and hoped for him to be. But maybe it is or will. I was a little worried about that. But then thinking about it, if if he's back out there at the plate, then I'm thinking like, okay, it's just the throwing. Like that's just the problem. Throwing across his body, doing everything he used to do at third base. Like that's the problem. And we know Har Harper's a better offensive player than Manny Machado. Not even a question. Uh, anybody out there want to argue me on that? I'll argue with you. No, but great. you know, it's it's not it's a good point. question. Yep. But um, Manny Machado, you know, he's going to be out there regardless. So if he's out there, I'm right. not going to make an excuse. Right. Exactly. He's not going to be sitting. I I've I've said this multiple times. When Manny Machado plays, if he's not going to complain about his injuries, even though Which he kind of is for the first time, I don't. I don't think this is the complaining. I think this is more of just like um, an update. Like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be on the field. Like, I don't think I'm at 100. Right. You right. know, I, I don't know if I'm going to be out in the field throwing the ball around. I'm not 100. At the plate mm -hmm. right now, he's just at the plate. So yeah, of course he's not 100. percent I'm not, I don't view this as like complaining at all. Manny Machado doesn't complain. He doesn't tell anybody about his injuries ever. So if Manny Machado doesn't complain and, and use his injuries as the reason why he's thumping and, and not performing offensively, then I'm not either. Right. He's out there. He has to perform. End of discussion. Yeah, I agree with you. We're going to go to the phones in a moment if you want to weigh in. 877-767-4760. I mean, you make a really good point on, yeah, productivity. I mean, he's being paid to produce. And if he's going to be in there, if he's not in there, it's not his fault. If he's got a legitimate injury a year ago, broke his wrist. Yeah, I mean, that's not his fault. So mm -hmm. you can't do anything about it. Now, he's going to be asked to perform even when he's not 100%. He's making $350 million over the next 10 years. That That's the business of baseball. Let's go to the phones and race. Race, uh, you want to weigh in? You're on with John and Jim. Thanks for calling in, man. Yeah, thanks, guys. Um, you know, personally, I, I think it's kind of crazy that, that uh, anybody really – thought that this was a playoff team i mean we're not going to be any better than we were last year and these i mean these contracts that preller dished out to manny and bogarts i mean these are going to eat us for the next 10 years i mean the padres are sunk based on that i mean we i mean bogarts i don't know why it's not a bigger issue about his wrist he has a chronic wrist issue that was a big issue last yeah. year and you can imagine with the 10-year deal that's going to come up again and then obviously you guys have been talking about you know, Manny's elbow, which could sideline him this year. I mean, we're talking 10 more years. I mean, Preller definitely should have let him play out that fifth year and then let him walk. Those two contracts alone are going to make Hosmer's deal seem like, you know, patty cake. So, I, I, I mean, I have no idea how to – I mean, Preller's going to get fired after this year once we don't make the playoffs. But that's – what's the next GM going to do with these massive deals and a team that's pretty much weak everywhere, pitching bench or bullpen loses us almost every game? It's rough, man. Thank you, Ray. And by the way, it's a great call. I mean, we have said before that if you switch GMs tomorrow, it doesn't automatically make the team better. They're tied up financially mm -hmm. in deals that AJ Preller has signed. And I would I would go back to the Manny Machado contract and say that was more of a Peter Seidler than an AJ Preller. There's Even though AJ Preller well. had to yep. obviously be involved in sign and obviously make that deal happen. Yep. But it, the Xander thing. I don't know, man. I, I mean, it, just, it just looks like a guy who is shot at the plate. There's no pop there, nothing. He has one extra base hit this season, and That's even that extra possible. base hit was was not really like a oh, off the top of the wall type of right. double, right? If he's going to be your leadoff hitter, you can't have a sub 600 OPS. I'm sorry. And if Xander is so fickle on wanting to be a leadoff hitter because he doesn't like to hit anywhere else in the lineup, that's a Xander thing. And that's great that he moved to second base this year, but you also have to realize that offensively, you're not getting it done. So if you're not getting it done, you can't complain about where you're hitting the lineup. Sorry. 
the sample size is still so small. That's what I'm saying as opposed to saying it's early. I want to say it's a small sample size, but numbers are numbers and facts are facts. The combined war of Machado and Bogarts this year is negative. The combined war of Machado and Bogarts, who've been out there every single day, is currently negative. Let's go to Michael on line three. Michael wants to weigh in. Thanks for calling in to John and Jim. Hey, guys. Thank you for taking my call. Hey, Michael. It's been a while since I've been able to, it's been a while since I've been able to talk to you guys. Yeah, thanks for I calling. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, you know, you know, with Machado, you know, he's hot and cold sometimes, but I think, I think he'll be okay just as a DH is hitting. Um, but I do think we need more offense. Um, uh, you know, we got Salas and DeVries in the minor leagues. I would call Chicago back up, the White Sox, and I would try to get Luis Roberts and that uh, Mike Soraka. We could use a little bit more pitching, too. Uh, not for, you're not trading the... Salas or DeVries, though, Michael, are you? I no. mean, that's that's the top of their well, system. I mean, it might be it might be three years before they come up to the majors and they, they could, they could be stars or they could be bums. I mean, we just, and then by that time in three years, Machado and Tatis will be <laughs> older and, and, and falling off a little bit. Well, Tatis, Michael, thank you. Uh, Tatis will still he, be in his 20s. Bogart, but Bogart's, Bogart's will... Machado's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you got to stay, you got to be young. You got to have players that don't get paid $10 million per year. You can't only have guys mm. that are past their six year like that, you can't only have guys in the middle of their career. The biggest emphasis on this season was the stars have to perform. That was the hashtag. If the stars don't perform, this team ain't going anywhere. They'll be a 500 team at best, even with the good pitching that they've gotten, right? Even with some nice performances from Jake Cronenworth mm -hmm. and Luis Campusano. Yeah. If the stars well, don't moment. be the stars, they ain't winning. And they ain't making the postseason. And right now, two of the three stars are severely underperforming. And the other one, Tatis, done a fine job. He's done he's been nice. He hasn't been But it's the, not some oh setting the world on fire twelve games. He's not strike. the like, oh my God, Fernando Tatis Jr. is acting like an MVP for the first twelve games of the season. It's not that. Right. All right. We'll go to the phones on the other side. People want to weigh in. 877-767-4760. Also, what happened yesterday in San Francisco? This isn't supposed to be the 2023 Padres. Oh, do I have? Oh, I have some things that I need to get off my chest about yesterday. Okay. We'll do that on the other side. Plus, we have a giveaway we need to tell you about. Our pregame coverage for UConn and Purdue begins at 430. Tip off at 620. The national championship game, courtesy of Westwood One. Stay with us on John and Jim. Guys, Almond RX packs are going to be a game changer for you. If you're on the go, you've got a family. It feels like you're always running around. It's so easy to eat unhealthy when you're on the go. It just is. It's so easy to turn to a vending machine. You can eliminate the vending machine from your day for yourself, your spouse, your loved ones, your kids, and you can get your daily dose of vitamin D. It's an immunity booster. These Almond RX packs, everyone loves a healthy snack for their family. If you're looking for that, something healthy and tasty that curbs hunger, Look no further than Almond RX. It's the first and only skinless almond fortified with vitamin D, which means it's an immunity booster founded by a San Diego sports medicine physician, which I think is super cool. It's packed with the powerhouse of nutrients. It supports your heart health, cellular health, gut health. There are so many healthy benefits from these Almond RX packs. And the best news is you can pick them up right here in San Diego County. You can find them in any food land in San Diego. Harvest Ranch at Encinitas has them. Or go to almondrx.com. That's A L M O N D R X.com. In fact, if you go there right now, you're getting free shipping on all orders of $25 or more. Go there right now. Free shipping, orders of $25 or more. Almondrx.com. I'm telling you, your family's going to love them. Your kids are going to love them. You're going to love them. Perfect for the on the go lifestyle. Almond RX.
All right, this update is brought to you by AutoZone Padres. They found a way to lose yesterday's game to the Giants, 3-2. to two. They lost the series 2-1. to one. They now head back home to take on the Cubs tonight at Petco Park. 640 first pitch. You Darvish will be on the mound for the Padres tonight. Moving over to the national championship game, which is tonight as UConn takes on Purdue. UConn looking to win back-to-back national titles. 4.30 is when our coverage starts. 6.20 is tip-off time. You can listen to that right here on San Diego Sports 760. Other college basketball news of the day. John Calipari, last night it's been reported that he'll be the next head coach at Arkansas. And John Cody Rhodes is the new WWE Undisputed Universal Heavyweight Champion after he beat Roman Reigns last night in Philadelphia. Fixed. Starting stronger starts at AutoZone, where they've got battery solutions in the form of free battery testing, free battery charging, and replacement batteries that fit your needs. That's what makes them America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone. By the way, again, the pregame coverage Jim just told you about for the national championship begins right here on San Diego Sports 760 at 430. You may recall last year, San Diego State was in this game against Connecticut. That's a big game. Remember that, yeah. This year, Connecticut, Purdue, number one and number two meeting, at least number one and number two in Ken Palm, meeting tonight in Phoenix. Today, though, between now and 4.30, we will give away a pair of tickets to see Neil Young and Crazy Horse. This is April 25th at the Cal Coast Credit Union Amphitheater. We do want to weigh in on yesterday's debacle in San Francisco for the Padres, but first, let's go back to the phones. 877-767-4760. Dave has been patient. Dave, thank you. You're back on with John and Jim. Hey, thanks, guys, for uh, having me again. Yeah. A um, couple of things. First of all, here's the bigger thing on Manny. They have nobody to replace him. And and you, you take him out of the lineup, whether you want to keep him there or not because of the injury, there's nobody on that bench you can go to that's, that's um, suitable. So I'm sitting here looking at Brandon Belt, career 261 hitter. Tommy Pham, career 259 hitter. Mm-hmm. 20 points higher than Kim. 20 points higher than Profar. So we're sitting there, these guys waiting to be hired for nothing. What do you got to lose if you're the Padres? What are you waiting for at this point? Yeah, I think it's a great point, Dave. I mean, I I do think there's something to be said for, they obviously need an influx. You're batting jerks in Profar fifth. He's had a nice start to his year. His grand slam was massive. Who knows what this series, that series in San Francisco looks like without that moment. In their last 57 innings, They've had one multi-run inning. It was the Profar two-out Grand Slam in their last 57 innings. They need to find a way in some form or fashion to get the offense going. And they're they're doing well with runners in the scoring position this year. It's not a total debacle. Agreed. They have the 10th best OPS in baseball. Correct. So that's not a total debacle. Them right. actually getting runners across the plate has been struggle a struggle. It's not like it's they're scoring one and two runs every game because they've had big offensive outputs. Yep. It's just they're not consistent. And when they're consistent, they're only consistent in a way where they just don't score runs. They're not consistent in a right. way where they score four runs every game. If they score four runs every game with this pitching staff, you're gonna win a lot of ba- you're gonna win a lot of baseball games. Mm-hmm. But the problem is they can't consistently score four runs. It's really hard for them. They might have a game where they score eight or nine runs, but then they go four out of the next five games, you know, going two runs, one run, two runs, two runs, maybe three runs. Right. Like that's the biggest issue is it's, they're not consistent offensively to a point where it, it matches with their pitching staff, at least to, to the extent of, Hey guys, just get us four runs today, three runs today. We're going to, we're going to win this game because the pitching it's it's going to be there, and that's what this team is going to um, lean on this year heavily is their pitching staff. Right, and hopefully they're going to be leaning on winning games like the game they lost on Sunday or the game they lost on Friday. The three two games you need to win, and what happened yesterday is just throwing a game away. Like it's the like definition literally. of yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, a game that was done. San Francisco doesn't look good. They've beaten the Padres four of seven times, not because. Not really a credit to them. Padres have had chances against the Giants Friday and Sunday. What happened yesterday is the second time in 12 games the Padres have lost a game or had something crazy happen that's a 1-in-1,000 play. Kim having a ball pop out of his glove yesterday, an elite gold glove defender, and Cronenworth having a ball go through his mitt. 
two weeks ago in Korea. Again, we don't know if they win that game or not, or even yesterday, but they've had two one in a thousand plays happen in 12 games. The Cronenworth play, if he just made it, and we don't even know if they turn the double play. Let's say they Correct. do. Let's say they do. Well, then they're going into the top half of the next inning tied. Correct. Kim tags out Soler yesterday, which was, by all accounts, you've seen that tag a million times from a baseball player. Oh, yeah. And a million times out of a million times, that guy's out. But that one time, yesterday, the ball inexplicably just flies out of Kim's glove. It was crazy. And Soler didn't do anything egregious nope. to cause the ball to fly out. He just kind of normal slide. Ball flies out. Soler takes the extra base because everyone's like, what the hell? I mean, why would Jackson Merrill be backing up that play? Kim has the ball in his hands. And then we know that you know Johnny Brito gives up the, the base hit to Matt Chapman. The rest is history. They would have gone into the ninth inning, guys, with a lead, and they would have given the ball to their closer, Robert Suarez. I saw a lot of this yesterday. Talked about it on the wrap-up show. Mm -hmm. Talked about it with Fadden today. Oh, did you? Talking Friars, special yeah. guest, big guest alert. Massive guest alert. Man, I wish I got an invite. He only invites big guests on his show. Uh, he invited me last week. Oh, that's right. I see a lot. I've been seeing a lot of this lately. It's Mike Schilt's fault because he doesn't know how to manage a bullpen. Schilty? Schilty's fault because he doesn't know how to manage. Why is Johnny Brito in the game? That's on Johnny Brito and Mike Schilt yesterday. I can't believe that Mike Schilt is, is uh, this bad with a bullpen, and it's a joke that Johnny Brito's in that game in, a crunch, in crunch time in the eighth inning. What are we doing here? Let me just remind everybody what I just said and what you all watched. Hassan Kim tagged Solaire, and if he makes that tag, we're going to the ninth inning with the lead. Because he didn't, that's why the Padres lost. It's not because of Mike Schilt. It's not because of Johnny Brito. He got the double play ball, okay? I'm hearing the same things early on this year about Mike Schilt and his bullpen management that I heard all last year about Bob Melvin and his bullpen management. You know who gives these players to these managers in the bullpen? It's A.J. Preller. Maybe right. look at the players that are given to these managers that they're that they have to use in these games at crunch time and maybe put more of the blame on that guy instead of the guy being forced and having to choose which one of these dudes are going to be in the game in a crucial point. Obviously, I mean, whoever's in your bullpen is going to be leaned upon heavily because you play every single day. So you either have a lead and you turn to three or four guys or you're trailing and you turn to three or four other guys. The roles are established not solely by Mike Schilt, to your point. Now, of course, you can be critical anytime you don't win a game, and maybe they shouldn't have faced Matt Chapman. That, that's fair. But yep. Matt Chapman does it even bad if Hassan Kim could hold on to a ball. And I don't want to be this guy, but look at the quotes from Kim post game. He put it on himself. It's on Kim. It happens. Yep. We're humans. Mm -hmm. We make mistakes. He's an elite defender. Everyone understands it. It shouldn't happen 10 times. It may be the only time it happens all year with Hassan Kim. He's never had a two error game until yesterday. And it truly cost them the game. But if Johnny Brito is on the team, he's going to pitch every other day on average. If Yuki Matsui is on the team, he's been good. Well, why didn't Matsui stay in? And you know what happens if Matsui gives up the lead? It's the same damn conversation. Yep. Why is he getting a second inning? It's so easy to Monday morning quarterback a bullpen. And this had nothing to do with their bullpen. Like zip zero zilch. We've only seen Mike Schultz for what is that? 11? Yeah, two weeks or whatever. two weeks. There's we've given we've talked about his post game stuff and the nicknames and everything, but yep. there's not been one point this year where I, I've pointed to and I, I think you feel the same way, John, where you're like, that's an egregious uh, error by not the manager. Egregious, no, like you might yeah. question a couple things like, oh, I want to do this. But if you're going to praise Mike Schilt for his aggressiveness to put in uh swore. Yeah, he's. he's they, they traded away one of the best players in the game for a bunch of pitchers that they're going to be using, guys. They're going to be using Johnny Brito. Right. And for the people out there, like Johnny Brito should be a starter. So the guy that pitched <laughs> five and a third uh, one-run ball yesterday, zero earned runs, you're going to take that guy to the starting rotation and for Johnny Brito? The the guy that throws knuckleballs? Like, what are we doing here? Right. You guys just want to blame somebody. It, not blame somebody, but you just want to blame the manager 
every single time when it's very convenient to, but also in this instance, it's completely off base, completely off base. When Mike Schilt does something where he needs to be criticized, we'll criticize him. Okay. Don't worry. We got you. But in this case, you all look, not all, but most people that I saw, like you're looking at the wrong thing yesterday. You want to get upset at Brito and Schilt. You're, you're, you're taking your anger and you're putting it in the wrong spot. That game yesterday was on Hassan Kim, and he told you just as much after the game. Yeah, and again, I want them to prove to me it's not 2023, and so far they haven't exactly done that. They have found some ways to lose games in the first two weeks of the season. All right, 4.30, our pregame coverage begins. UConn and Purdue, Westwood wants coverage. 6.20 is the tip-off of the national championship game from Phoenix. On the other side, is that good? The best and worst of the sports weekend. Still ahead, the wrap. Plus, we'll give away Neil Young tickets between now and 4.30. Stay with us.
All right, is that good? The best and worst of the sports weekend. Plus, we're giving away Neil Young tickets on the other side. Stay with us. All right, real quick, 503. So you're saying taking out Matsui for Brito was the right choice. John and Jim, no ball. I'm telling you right now, you have no clue what happens if Matsui stays in. And Brito came on, and they should have left the inning with the exact same score, 2 1. Got a double. So, what are you missing? Got a double play ball. Yeah, let's, it's like blaming. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's the road's fault that I was speeding. No, it's not. Like, you're, you're, you've lost sight of what happened. It was Mike Schultz's fault that Hassan Kim dropped the ball yesterday. Yeah, you're right. You, you're right. No, it was actually, it was Brito's. Oh, that's because right. Because if Matsui stays in, Kim right. holds on to that ball. It was ball. also, but this one was, but Mike Schultz's uh, fault was also Hassan Kim throwing the ball 30 feet over the first baseman, uh, Jake Cronworth, and that leading to an unearned run. Yeah, yeah. Like that was also. So Schultz Mike also Schultz. doesn't know, but he must yeah. not know baseball. He doesn't know. He baseball. doesn't. He's he must not know what he's doing. Schulte does not like know. Melvin. He didn't no. know what he was doing. Melvin didn't know either. We do. We know. <laughs> do we? Well, you and I know, and our listeners know. It was, but Schulte and Melvin yeah. don't know. It was all Melvin's fault last year, and it's all Schulte's fault when things don't go right this year. It's twelve games. And the truth is, they've had two crazy eclipse-like moments. Mm -hmm. You had the Cronenworth glove. Good, good, uh, good use you of like eclipse. That? Yeah, and you had the Kimmy. Ball pops out of his glove when the inning's over. I mean, you drop. can't put that on anyone other than Kimmy. All right, let's get to this. People will try. I know. I'll start with this uh, kind of a shocker in the college basketball world. Yeah. I was following John Fanta as he was losing his mind in his car okay. <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, I saw which that Which was video. fantastic. Yeah. Um, John Calipari will now be the new head coach at Arkansas. 
mm-hmm. leaving Kentucky. Brent, is that good? It is good! If you're a Kentucky fan, you're going to probably figure out what it's like to have, um, you know, what you drove John Calipari out the door, and now you're going to figure out what it's like. It's going to be different. It'll be it'll different. It'll definitely be different. If I was a Kentucky fan, it might be kind of refreshing to actually have players on the team for more than a year. Yeah. And, and they've not, won one tournament against the 29. Yeah. And not, you know, forcing them out the door just because you want to go with an all freshman thing. Like I always remember the DeMarcus Cousins story about how he wanted to come back for another year. And Cal Perry told him, no, that's not how it works here. You're going into the NBA right. draft, whether you like it or not. It's time. I mean, they lost to Oakland this year in the first round. They lost to St. Peter's two years ago. Was it four I mean, last five years they've lost in the first? And or? the other year they made the round of 32. Yeah. It's probably time. He was owed $32 million unless he left, and now they owe him nothing. So it's, it could be a win-win. Uh, my first is that good. Hassan Kim had his, had his first career two-error game <sighs> directly leading to a Padres loss. Is that good? No, he's not. No, but he's Are been good kidding? otherwise. Johnny, it was Schilke's fault, and it was Brito's fault. What's Johnny Brito's nickname? Johnny? Probably just like Johnny because yeah. it's easy. Not That's his name. It's not Brito. It's can't do that. It's Johnny. I need nicknames returning tonight. I need a win so I get some nicknames back. Right. In my we, need, life. we need That's Happy we Shield. Need. We need Happy Shield after a game a win. for post game uh, to get some nicknames out there. So yesterday afternoon, the Iowa women's team took on uh, South Carolina in the women's national title game. Yeah, I we all knew that this was going to get big time ratings yep. because UConn Iowa hit like 15 or 16, 17 million. This blew that out of the water. This game yesterday, 18.7 million viewers. It peaked at 24 million. Mm -hmm. It is the most watched basketball game, men's or women's college or pro since 2019. And it's the most watched sporting event since 2019, obviously exclude the uh, the NFL, any, any football and the Olympics. Is that good? Is that good? Here's what's amazing. The last NBA game to beat it was in 2017 NBA Finals. Warriors the last baseball game to beat it, Cubs win the World Series. The last NHL game to beat it has never occurred. <laughs> There's never been an NHL game to match that rating. I mean, it, it's crazy. Now, is it the Caitlin effect, like yes. the Tiger effect? Yes. Because without Tiger, golf doesn't draw the same number. Without Caitlin, will women's basketball find the next Caitlin, or is she... A complete one of one. I th- I would say right now she's a one of one. There are until there are, proven otherwise. Until proven otherwise, there There's are some real, great players. Some great players, but as of right now, and I think the head coach for South Carolina even said it after the yeah, game at the podium. Without Caitlin Clark, they don't get the growth for the women's game this year that they got. Yeah, half as many people watched a year ago. Right, and she was in the national championship a year ago. Speaking of Caitlin Clark, she finished her career with 3,951 points, the most ever scored by a Division I player, men's or women's. Is that good? It is good! Didn't win a title, so that's kind of hard to say. Yeah. You're the best ever. I know. It is an interesting conversation. It really yeah. is. Because I think Diana Taurasi is... Some of them have... There's some players with four titles. Yeah, the multiple undefeated seasons. Yeah. It's debate, but we won't have it right now. Finally, John, uh, I know I've been saying this in the update, and I know you definitely, definitely watched last night. I did. Cody Rhodes. Oh, I didn't watch that. T- took down Roman Reigns to win the WWE Universal Undisputed Heavyweight Championship. Brent, is that good? It is good! Roman Reigns was the champion for 1,316 days. Mm-hmm. Since 20... <laughs> he's not... no, no, I'm looking up he's... something. Seriously. No, I'm listening. listening. I am listening. I... Roman Reigns has been the champion since 2020. Yeah. That's a that's a big, 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 big moment last night. Okay, so I sent this to Brent and Jim because I sent it to Jim. I after WrestleMania, or like during it, or I don't know if it was day one or day two. I don't even know. I texted Jim crying at Cody immediately turning his head towards Triple H, L M A O O O. I was like, but I just this? copy and pasted that from Twitter. I thought it was someone else that texted me. I didn't and know they it was said, you. wait, huh? And then I said, feel like I'm back in the attitude era. You have no the idea the attitude elbow. <laughs> and he goes, are you copying tweets and sending them? I said, I'm just copying and pasting tweets, yes. LOL. Yes, you are. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, my final one. Yeah, you what is keep it? the music off. The next solar eclipse in the United States, visible from any portion of the United States, is no, August no, 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 of 2044. No, not good. This thing was so overrated, I saw nothing. It's not for another 20 years and five months, the next one. Yeah, it's, it was stupid. Is that good? 
crickets. By Thank the way, you, I'm pretty sure though, when it got like quasi dark, and I didn't even look at the thing, it didn't get dark, but it got like weird looking yeah. outside. These the birds started doing weird things. I'm gonna blame Ben Fadden today for my lack of oh, because you were filming or whatever eclipse viewing, even though it did get a little dark in my room. It when got I was, like weird looking. Was recording, but you can't if you look up at the sun. You like lose on your the eyes. West Coast. You're gonna be looking at the sun because. <laughs> The like only up. place that the eclipse was, I guess, at its peak and like most visible was on the East Coast. Like Cleveland was a perfect place and perfect example of a, a you see today's game, the Cleveland Guardians, they're all out. It did, man. And it was looked like it was like 7 p.m. Yeah. Yeah, it's over. Anyway, it's if stupid. you missed it, you'll just stick around 20 years from now. Yes, yeah, maybe it'll be visible if it's not cloudy and if it hits San Diego. All right. On the other side, we'll give away Neil Young tickets. We have the wrap for you. We'll get you ready for tonight. UConn and Purdue pregame coverage begins at 4.30 right here on San Diego Sports 760. Hour 2, John and Jim next.
All right, this update is brought to you by AutoZone Padres. After losing yesterday's game to the Giants, 3-2, to two, they returned back home to take on the Cubbies for a three-game series at Petco Park. 6:40, first pitch, Hugh Darvish will be on the mound for the Padres tonight. And the national championship game between UConn and Purdue is tonight in Arizona. 4.30 is when our pregame coverage starts. 6, uh, 6.20 is tip-off time. You can listen to that right here on San Diego Sports 760. And John Calipari, he will be the new head coach next season at Arkansas. Starting Stronger starts at AutoZone, where they've got battery solutions in the form of free battery testing, free battery charging, and replacement batteries that fit your needs. That's what makes them America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone. All right, San Diego and Southern California, what's going on? This is hour two of John and Jim. Pre-game Westwood One coverage for UConn Purdue, the men's national title at 620. We'll have pre-game coverage right here on San Diego Sports 760 beginning at 430. We will give away Neil Young tickets. Be listening for that. We'll do it in the next 10 minutes. Two things before we get to the wrap, Jim, related to the college basketball national championship game. You can hear it right here. Yes. One is, I sent this to Jim Brent. There's a video of John Calipari Dude. walking down the street in Lexington, walking his small dog. He has a stroller, which I guess is for his dog. The dog is in the stroller. Oh, I thought this dog was on the side of the stroller. I think the dog is in the stroller. During that video, he was, but there's also photos of him with the dog out on the ground. There's a couple of those people on my block. So he's, he's strolling a dog down the street amidst like a firestorm in Lexington, Kentucky. And they're like, hey, do you want to talk about what's going on? He's like, no, I just want to walk my dog. <laughs> but you're not, what? I, it's it very weird. It's very weird. Very, very, it's very, very, very you weird. You need to see it. It's it's like, I figured he'd be like in the office. Or like, or like negotiating a deal or talking to players. Yeah, or ready for watching the clip. Getting ready for his press conference to be the next Arkansas head coach. So that was weird. But here's the other thing. Now, I would have no problem with this if San Diego State was on the list. Okay. So this will show my true colors. <laughs> yes. I can't deal with a way too early top 25 before the season's even over with 2,000 players in the portal. But field of 68, our buddy John Fanta works over there. So I can't be too critical because I love John Fanta. He's amazing. He's the best. But they have a way too early top 25. And I'm sorry, give me a break. When Boise State and New Mexico are 20th and 21st and you're way too early top 25 and San Diego State's not in it. When the Aztecs made a sweet 16 and have the third highest winning percentage since 2019. It's sorry. O- it's, o- it's okay, John. No, No, like it's not. And I need to like, is there a hotline I can call at field of 68? This is like if Cody Rhodes like lost on like a double slam or something. Probably you're right. Ladder match. There was a ladder match, but it wasn't that ladder match. You, yeah. Wait until you see tonight. Do you know who won the ladder match? Undertaker. He was there. Technically two teams won. New Mexico. I could give, we could give John a, a million thousand years. guesses and he would never even get close. Who won? Just tell me. I don't care. Two teams. Two the, teams? Yeah. Because not like, a team. Yeah. Because like when you're a tag team. Oh, yeah. Makes there's sense. two people. Yep. Austin Theory and Grayson Waller won one championship belt, the SmackDown tag team titles. And then the Miz and R Truth won the Raw. The Miz that Kristen used to watch in like Real World Road Rules that Challenge. Correct. Yes. That oh, one. Oh, my God. He won with R Truth. Shouldn't he be like doing some something in Cancun? No. Like flying off trapezes that's, to win that's a money. a long time ago. No. Yeah. Okay. It's 2024, John. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. That's right. It's okay. All right. Uh, Purdue, UConn National Championship pregame coverage at 430. We'll give away Neil Young tickets right after the wrap. Well, tonight's men's title game top yesterday's women's title game in terms of ratings. The now, this all, is a question. It's a question. <laughs> okay. I don't think so. I don't think it's going to top 24 million. I just don't. No, but you got to go average TV viewing rating. Yeah. So but, it was 18.7. Okay. Okay. 18.7. Yeah, that's the number. Last year's did what? 
four, almost 14.4. Okay. The only way you can maybe, maybe get that is if it's like a really close game. They, they'll need that. But yep. then but then you'd only get the peak number, not the average number. Because the peak number would mean that oh, people are looking at the, the score and like, oh my God, it's close. Let me to my get TV. over there. Yeah. And maybe you do. I mean, you have you have the best team in the country looking to go back to back. It's not versus like a massive underdog. You have the player of the year in Zach Eady in Purdue. They're their number one seed. It's a perfect matchup for it. Yeah, it's not NC State versus UConn. As far as like a, uh, you know, Here's seeding the goes. Let me tell you the issue. The main issue. They would top it if this game was on CBS. It's not. Yeah. Every other year they go CBS, TBS. Mm, got it. So I still, th- I think it's going to be close. I could argue it'll be a half million under, a half million over. I think it'll be between 18 and 20, which is a massive number, especially for TBS. I mean, it's a massive number, but if I was a betting man, which I kind of can be sometimes. I'm going to go slightly lower. I'm going to go just a touch Me too. under. Me too. Is TBS? Yeah. Yesterday's women's game was on ABC yeah. and is the number one rated basketball game in five plus years. Which is wild. Right, including men's titles. So it's going to be very close. Yeah. But I, I don't think it'll top it. Unless, to your point, if it goes to overtime, yeah. if it's close, then probably. Aaron's maid of honor, Claire, who you guys yeah. will meet at the wedding, she was at the game. She was at the women's national yeah. she went to the. She went to the both... The final four games and then the national title game. What's Claire doing in Cleveland? Uh, her family lives there. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Next question. How Is many it, people watch WrestleMania? A lot. Peacock, oh, like a 20? lot. A lot. Like a lot. I'll, I'll, I'll Not 18.7 million. No. Next question. Should the Padres shake up their lineup? They have. Well, they actually have today, but it's not a shake up that I think. I put out a meme. of was I like, love that. It was like the uh, Mike Schultz shaking up their lineup. And it's a guy and you all know this meme or most of you do. That's wearing a flannel t-shirt and he's holding a present that he just got, which is the same flannel t-shirt he's wearing. So there's like no change. There's at no all. change. And that's then, what they did today. Meryl moved up one spot. Kim moved down one spot and the top four, there's still the top four or the top. Yeah. Top four, I mean, the top four. Jerks and Profar moving up in a lineup is not shaking up a lineup. No. When Jerks and Profar is your fifth, your number five hitter. Protecting Machado. Yeah. Well, what what is shaking up? It's probably putting it Merrill first or second in the lineup. Like that's your shake up. Are you gonna I put Merrill at the top? Firmly on the side of Today. keep Merrill where he is. No, I agree with that. I he's had a nice 34 at bats. Really nice 34 at bats. Is he, that what it is? It is. He looks like he belongs so far. He mm-hmm. doesn't look overmatched. He had a four hit day yesterday, four for four, stolen base. His best day as a pro in his early career. I'm keeping him where he's at. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You put all of a sudden you put Jackson Merrill in the leadoff spot or closer to the top of the lineup. Guess what happens? The pressure ratchet is up to like a thousand. And I, I agree. I just I I I want to see this guy succeed. I want to this team to put him in the best possible position to succeed. And I don't know if that's at the top of the lineup right now. If well, 158 bats in and he's still hitting 324, then yeah, we can have that conversation. But you're 34 bats in. So keep him where he's at. Well, this is what I say. I mean, if this team continues to struggle, they're going to have to make a change. And I don't know what it's going to be, and they might put some of the onus on Merrill. But if you come out of this Cup series scoring two runs per game on average and you keep throwing the same lineup out there, at some point, someone is going to get involved and say, we have to make real changes to this lineup. I'm with you on Merrill. I keep him where he is right now. But again, if this team continues to struggle offensively, there'll be pressure likely to move him, whether that's a good decision or not. Next question. Does Purdue have a puncher's chance tonight against the Huskies? I think they do because they have the player of the year in Zach Eady. And I think um, if any player this year will cause UConn the most problems, I would say it's Zach Eady. Mm-hmm. He causes everybody problems. And we're going to see how Klingon matches up with Eady. And if Eady wins that matchup like big time, then yeah, Purdue has a chance. But that's the key is Zach Eady has to dominate that matchup versus Klingon. And if he doesn't, then UConn's going to win going away. Right, or can he get Klingon potentially in foul trouble? Um, they definitely have a puncher's chance. To me, a puncher's chance is 1 in 10. The odds would suggest they have a much better chance than 1 in 10. It's probably more like 1 in 3 to 1 in 5 as a 6.5 point underdog. By the way, if you're wondering, how does this compare to last year's national championship game point spread-wise? San Diego State was a 7.5 point underdog. 
Purdue is a six and a half point underdog. Wow. The amazing thing about that is Purdue is the consensus number two team in the country, yet still six and a half points. UConn is six and a half points clear of Purdue. They absolutely have a puncher's chance. I don't like their chances, though. I think UConn is way more well-rounded. I think they can answer Zach Eady on the inside, which few teams in America can do. And I think their guard play is better than Purdue's guard play. And Purdue did not shoot it overly well the other night in general and turn the ball over 16 times. I think it's UConn's to lose tonight in Phoenix. Next question. John, was this weekend's WrestleMania the best ever? Uh, let me start with that. Um, <laughs> this was the 40th, right? Correct. Good I, job. Would, yes. I think it's a top 40 WrestleMania. And since it was a two-night event, was it always a two-night event? Nope. Nope. So move it above the one night events. And now that I know Miz won and Sean Rhodes, <laughs> Cody, Cody <laughs> Rhodes won. I think it's a top 20, top 10. I mean, is there a best WrestleMania ever? Not a consensus, but there's a lot that I would say for me and Brent, I know you have an opinion on this as well. I would say WrestleMania 17. Was that 17 when the, when Stone Cold and yes. Vince, Vince McMahon teamed up and beat The Rock. I think it was 17. He's it might have been 17 or 18. 17 wow. or 18. Mm -hmm. But it was Stone Cold and The Rock for the title. And Vince came out and helped Stone Cold. Whatever that was, 17 or 18. That was an all-time main event at WrestleMania. Are you saying 2017 or? No, 20 no, no WrestleMania 17. Okay. okay. Uh, maybe Daniel Bryan winning. That was a huge like moment. Like a big pop. Well, see, it depends. Are you talking just moments? Or are you talking the like the whole event in general? Because I I can't WrestleMania. I can't say for the whole event because it's I can't remember what. All right, how about this? Part of the, it was main one of the event. better main events main in event. a long time. Main event. Yeah, it was probably the best main event since the Dana Bryan one. And that was. Did we run through it all wasn't forty the main events? It wasn't the best match. Wasn't think, the best match, but I it, think Undertaker and Shawn Michaels, either one of those, was still better. Hell in a Cell and even Triple it, H, Undertaker. Yeah. I would say this is complete recency bias. Just looking at the main event last night with all the storylines and the returns of the of John Cena, The Rock, and the Undertaker. To me, that's. In like five years from now, people will probably be like, yeah, it's the best WrestleMania main event ever. But aren't they going to say the same thing next year? Like, are you going to watch next year and be like, mm, no, like luster, dude, just didn't live up the to way it that this thing has yeah, been built so up much, for like a long two time plus years. And then a, and, and, and a guy that has held the championship for four plus years to finally lose. You're never going to get that again. Never. never. You're never going to get a guy. That is going to hold the title in WWE for more than a year plus. Like this guy didn't hold the Hogan have it for like 10 years. years. He yeah, did. If he, would have oh, held on, if he would have held on to it yesterday and not lost, he would have passed Hogan's record. Yeah. All right. We could get back to this. <laughs> it was because the show's awesome. going to, because we have Purdue and UConn coming up at 4 30. Um, call right now. Caller five. You've got two free tickets for Neil Young. All right. 877. Seven six seven four seven sixty. This is a great show because you get to see Neil Young. Eight seven 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 six seven four seven sixty. Neil Young, Crazy Horse, April twenty fifth, Cal Coast Credit Union Amphitheater, Ticketmaster.com for tickets and info. Caller five, they're yours. Eight seven 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 six seven four seven sixty. This is less than three weeks away. Lines are gonna be loaded. Call right now. Eight seven 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 six seven four seven sixty. So your highlight of the weekend was WrestleMania. Yes. Over Final Four. Yes. Over championship games. Over yes. Padres Giants. That thrilling series <laughs> yes. by the Bay. Yes. Last night, the main event was, for me, it was the most exciting moment of my weekend. Wow. And and all and uh, frankly, <laughs> it was just like I grew up like wrestling, loved wrestling. I was and a, then you like r went away from it, and then I stopped liking it because it just became very too PG. Like I okay. was used to like the the attitude era where everybody was yeah people's elbow <laughs> pretty much it was just a completely <laughs> different time and then it became too PG and too honky and it was just the storyline sucked and everything was bad and then recently as of, of like two and a half years ago it started to get better and better and then now it's at an, a, a peak it's an all-time high 
with what they're doing. And I think you're seeing more of the mainstream sports media. Like Pat McAfee today was like his whole show was about WrestleMania. Right. And it's not the week, mainstream, but that's Pat McAfee. But it's the mainstream media. Yeah, kind it's of. ESPN. It's the biggest personality of ESPN. But does, does ESPN have a relationship with WWE or no? Um, they've had they've had a relationship yeah. where they have like wrestlers on like first take and everything. Right. And Pat McAfee also does commentary for WWE. Right. But like they're also now partnered with UFC, which is a legitimate unscripted sport. True. And the way that WWE is now, you're seeing a lot of people that used to love wrestling and then got away from it, get back into it. Like yesterday, um, Ian Rappaport was sitting like second row. You had Kyle Brandt of the NFL Network sitting like first row. George Kittle's there. Stoop Dog. Well, no, it's not. I mean, great. But again, it's like, that's great. I don't even know what point we're trying to prove. It's definitely popular. I just don't know how it's consumed among sports fans i don't know i mean i think i think it's very consumable entertainment property i think you have people that i mean just because it's a consumed entertainment property bachelor survivor i mean there's a zillion things that are consumed widely that are entertainment it doesn't make that i'm I'm just saying that but is it tailored for the sports consumer like like talking about like in cleveland they're talking about the browns are they also talking about does it resonate with people in Cleveland to talk about WWE like they talk about the Browns? They they do a good job of mixing it in. It's kind of like how, you know, the Super Bowl is for people that like football, but it's More a big enough that. event yep. that if, you know, you can not watch a single NFL game all year and you will still go to a Super Bowl party and, sure. you know, you'll pay attention for that one week. So it's kind of similar to where, yeah, they're going to have some things that you know are going to be connected to storylines that might have been going on for you know six months to a year to where if you'll you'll get more out of it if you've been watching the whole time opposed to if you just tuned in on Sunday. But they do a good job of making it accessible for people that are just tuning in just on Sunday. And everybody knows the big names like you know the Rock. Yeah, you know, you know you've John heard of John Cena. Cena. Yeah, you've heard of the Undertaker. Sure. You know you might not have heard of Jimmy and Jay Uso. Never. Or that. Solo Sokoa. <laughs> no. But like I would say Star Wars characters. We should do a show. Star Wars characters <laughs> or, pro, or WWF. Or pro wrestlers. Yeah. But you know the big names. Actually do that. And in a crazy sports town like Philadelphia, where almost was the birth. I mean, the rest, wrestling world in Philadelphia are like, they go hand in hand. And to have that moment last night and you see the crowd and how insane it went when all this stuff was happening, it's a big moment in just not only their world, the WWE world, but in sports entertainment in general. It was a I would, massive I, moment. I, I, I agree. I mean, I didn't watch one second. I know. But I tend to agree. All right, let's make predictions for tonight, because why not? UConn, Purdue, pregame okay. coverage begins in less than 10 minutes right here on San Diego Sports Seven. You meant the Padres. I was going to say 9-1 oh, no, Padres. No, we, no, 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 no. We're not making Padres, like Padres game 13 prediction. predictions, but we will make national championship game predictions, a game you can hear right here. UConn's what are you guys going to win by 25. Can you imagine? Wow. It's not even going to be close. Okay. UConn by 25, says Brent. Uh, UConn by 12. Wow. I don't have a very high opinion. That would be the closest result in their 12 tournament games the last two years. Their closest so far is 13. Um, I'll say UConn by eight. Wow. UConn by eight in a relatively closely played game. Purdue will be in, I believe, with eight minutes to play. I think they'll be in the game. A lot of the Purdue games are a lot like some Aztec games to where are they going to call Ladie for True. everything? You know, yep. it's the same thing with Zach Eady. You know, some games they'll let him play, and then other games they're going to call for ticky tacks. And five minutes into the game, his ass is on the bench. Mm. You would think that they would maybe not do that since it's a national title game, but I would hope not. That goes into that argument from, you know, the weekend. You know, should their refs call fouls when they're fouls, or should they just swallow their whistles because we think they should swallow their whistles? I hope it's a good game. Yeah, me too. I hope it's a good game. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just do. And anybody out there wanting to go somewhere to watch the national title game, Whiskey Girl, we're holding a special watch party with Big, oh, yes. Big, Big Rich, Big Rich TD, and Fletch starting at 6 p.m. So go hang out with those guys. They're watching the national championship game at Whiskey Girl. Okay. And uh should be a fun time. Shouldn't that be in my liners, Fletch? Probably. But, you know. 
All right, Whiskey Girls, get there. 6 p.m. National Championship game. You can hear it, of course, right here. San Diego Sports 760. And then the college basketball offseason. That's so sad. It's sad. And then we turn our attention to WrestleMania 41, which will be in Dubai next year. No, no, actually, it's going to be, I think, in Minnesota. Minnesota. It returns to Minnesota next year. And we can turn our attention to the Padres and the Cubs. Yes, we can. kick off a series tonight. Yes, yes. We... Everybody out listening out there, like guys, stop talking about wrestling. Don't worry, we're not going to talk about wrestling tomorrow. It's yeah, just, you know the Cubs are fresh off that series win over the Doyers. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Cubs have been good. Yeah, I mean they're six and three. I said to Jim off air, I'm like, listen, at some point you got to win a series against a good team, and you have Dar. Some. Yeah. Oh, the order. Is it Darvish? Let's go. Correct. Go win a series because you're playing the Dodgers yeah, this weekend. Exactly. Go win a series. L.A. So good luck. Yeah, I remember my first series, and it hasn't happened yet. But I, just, I don't remember it this year. All right. If you missed anything today, SportsSD.com, iHeartRadio app, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, or Spotify. If you're listening to a podcast of us, please leave a review as well. You can find us on social at John and Jim, J O N A N D J I M. We have free game coverage. Purdue and UConn on the other side. Tip off. At 6.20, get the Whiskey Girl tonight. Big Rich TD and Flush will be there beginning at 6 p.m. And for Brent and Jim, I'm John. Keep it here at San Diego Sports 760. What's up, brother? Peace out, brother. Oh, whatever.